Well, for the first time in studio, a couple of guys I've I've gotten to know a little bit recently, but I think uh, guys that musically, all uh, WWE fans feel like they they know, or I, I don't know if 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 the WWE fans put like a name to the face necessarily, but it's definitely in the last. In the last year or so, but 2017 has been a big year for putting the name CFOs with the theme music that uh, that that comes out in WWE, and that's who's here. Yeah. CFO dollars, according C- to some people. <laughs> CFO dollar sign. <laughs> yeah, CFO dollar sign. What's the haps, guys? Welcome How's to the going, show. Man? Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us. Sam. Yeah, we thanks for coming it. in, man. So, uh, uh, first of all, you guys had your CFOs existed prior to WWE? Uh, not technically. Actually. No. We've been together uh, doing stuff since high school. We grew up together. So we've been doing our own stuff uh, for a long time now. But right. CFOs really came about when we teamed up with the WWE and started doing songs for them. We kind of, as a team, came up with CFOs, and that's what we're going to be. That's how we're going to brand it. We're going to put everything out under that. So that's kind in of in conjunction I mean. with WWE, meaning that yes. CFOs won't really put out something. Um, well, yeah, we weren't we weren't like doing an artist project prior, right? Um, if that's what you're asking, yeah, no, it was more of like, here's our production team, and you know, we we work with other people too. So it was just general kind of community name at first, but really the core of CFOs is is John and myself. So gotcha. Okay, yeah, I mean, I I think it's really interesting, and it maybe it's like the new version of a, a high school garage band right that like because <laughs> yeah. music and yeah, production is so accessible now that you can be a high school kid and figuring out how music production works and and studio stuff works and electronic instruments and 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 all these sort of elements that come together were you guys did you consider yourself a music production house or a band or well, we were kind of like those we were those kids before this current generation of like laptop you know DJs. laptop DJs yeah, yeah. we were like those <laughs> throwing kids your, throwing your hands <laughs> up in the air in the middle of the mixes yeah, and just hit like... the space bar and just, uh, just go for it you know <laughs> yeah we were kind of that way not doing that but we were we were making all different types of music um before the technology really got super accessible so we hmm. were, we we were just always into production we were always into songwriting and we could never really settle on just one genre so we were those guys that were just like doing electronic doing hip hop doing rock yeah we and- we actually tried to put together how many times did we tried to do a band? I don't even know. Oh, we we tried so many times to like oh let's actually have a band and go play shows and do this but and did we- you like did you did you Try to start a band like I'll play this, you play that, and bring other people yeah, in. Or yeah, was yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've I've been playing drums since I was like eight, so mm-hmm. that was kind of the main thing I would always do. And then um, you sang and played guitar, so it was kind of always that. And then we were trying to find you know a bass player and other guitar players and all that stuff. But, and in your mind, was it like we'll just hire other people to join us, or uh, was it a band? They band? were more like our friends. They yeah, were, okay. yeah, yeah. So it's it was, a band. It was band. like trying to actually yeah. start a band, but. We were just not able to find the right people that clicked with us, I mm-hmm. guess. And like um, everyone from our town that played bass just sucked. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't get it together. Right. We get the unit together. So. Right. So we so with that we then we got some uh home recording gear and we got, you know, Pro Tools and this is in like two thousand one, I think. Wow. So. Yeah, it was like you're saying, it was before It really is the beginning of it. It was all before this you could record really great sounding stuff at home. So yeah. we were kinda you know, trying that out, and um, we just started producing our own songs, and we just do like a ton of demos where the two of us would play everything, and that's kind of essentially what we do now. So it's interesting that we weren't able to do the band thing, and it kind of turned into this co-production team, yeah. and that's now what we're doing. And so. so it wasn't even like you guys had this vision of the future, and you know, this is where it's going anyway. It was more like not at all. Everybody sucks. We don't <laughs> suck though, so we should just do it ourselves. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Not that's. <laughs> Not to sound pretentious, but right. or it was just we were just on the same page. You know what I mean? It was totally. hard to find people that were uh, on the same page as us, just as far as what we wanted to do. So, yeah. But no, I mean, um, we didn't plan on doing this at all. It all kind of happened the way that it did, and I'm I'm glad that it did. <laughs> what kind of genre were you thinking about when you were gonna do a band? Oh or, man, it was because bands was... can't really no <laughs> float like that, right? Yeah. Like I would uh, be mad if it I was picked... more like rock based, I guess. I don't know, like 311 Incubusy kind like, of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, it, it was 2001. So yeah, I was about to say, you know, it was early 2000s. I mean, you are right there in yeah. rock rap territory. Yeah, right. So we Yo, were kind yeah. of 
playing around with a lot of that stuff, but um and then we were doing like a lot of electronic stuff too mm-hmm. on the side, so we would try to incorporate electronic stuff into our which songs is early too. for electronic stuff. Uh yeah, actually. I mean in that in that oh in that scene, yeah. In and and in the way we think of it now, See, I know we electronic were, music. Yeah, we were making like EDM no. dance music. We were just doing like we were doing like ambient weird electronic like side project kind of stuff. Like Apex sound twi- art. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. weird yeah. like Aphex twin square pushery <laughs> type. Yeah, it know, was that time obscure, of our life. Obscure yeah. electronic stuff. We yeah. were we were those like, you know, I guess high school, early college kids and just that was the headspace. Yeah. So Yeah. So how does the WWE relationship come about so you're you're now producing you're just kind of producing your own songs do you have any real do you have any clients well it didn't really i mean we were kind of like i I guess the best place to start this story is is how we broke into the industry yeah and and went from just being you know like the kids that were experimenting and that was all kind of john's doing so maybe you want to take that one uh yeah after college i started engineering at wind up records okay um so i got an engineering gig over there um and they had a studio right around the block in Times Square. By the way, I just wanted, I, I just wanted because it's been on my mind recently. Yeah, yeah. Your story is a great story. I feel like lately I've been coming into contact with a lot of people mm-hmm. that it's they're trying to do something and it's just not working, and they just won't stop. And I'm like, no, there's other avenues. Like the fact that you were like, you know what, we're trying to put this band thing, and but but it's not really working. Let me get a job as an engineer yeah. at a record label because it's still the industry. I'm good at this. Exactly. And I can do this well and then kind of figure out the other stuff. But like so many people, whether it's bands or comedy or whatever, mm-hmm. they're just like, no, I'm going to be a <laughs> singer and that's, that's all it. I'm going to be. Yeah. And it's like, you're not going to yeah. be. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a great point. Uh, for me, I saw engineering as not only a point to get in you know what i mean like because mm-hmm. you, you know you start to work on these projects where there's artists and producers coming around you know you you begin to meet a lot of people exactly and then that opens up other doors which is actually case in point how we got to where we are today mm-hmm. but for me a big thing too on the engineering tip i wanted my stuff and our stuff to sound as good as it could like amazing so I was like, hey, let me get more into. I was always into the, the engineering side, but for me, after college, I really wanted to hone in on that. Right. And uh, I spent about a year there. Uh, coming up, I was an assistant engineer, and then I became the in-house engineer. And I learned so much from that two-year period. And it's stuff that they don't teach you in school. You know, right. they can teach you a lot in school, but once you really get in there and you, you see these things, hand. yeah, yeah, it makes such a difference. So that, in turn helped our songs that we were doing after hours start to really sound like legit. And what were you doing for a living at this time? Well, I was I was still doing music, uh, but it was it was a total side gig. So I was just working in an office and gotcha. I was doing the doing the, the nine to five thing. And um when I would get out it was just always, you know, how far could you push yourself before you had to go to sleep to get up the next day? <laughs> right. Know? Totally, totally um, yeah, yeah, I would I would be like, come on, man, let's just do like two more hours. Come on. He's like, I gotta be up at eight. I'm like, no, like, dude, come on. you don't understand. Yeah, no, it's, it was it was it was tough, but it's cool now because I mean, all that paid off because now we wake up and all we have to worry about is creating music, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a blessing. And the truth is, I think like when you try to get into these type of industries, you don't know where you're gonna end up. Like mm-hmm. you're saying, you just have to push. Yes. And then you'll find you you know you'll find something that starts to work and you'll and you'll start to cater to that and a lot of times like this thing that you had your head wrapped around like that's my dream you don't even know the industry yep. you don't know what the jobs are in the industry and like if you'll just kind of be like well I'm not actually that good at this thing that I thought was my dream but there's this job over here that I didn't even know was a job that I actually really like right but people get so locked into this thing that they're not open to figuring out like let me just see where this takes yeah. me no that right? I mean that's the hardest part I think and again, like I said before, we did not plan on we're going to do all the WWE music and that like that was not even yeah. a thought, to be honest. Like 20 years ago, you're like, no, I got this. If you, I got this violin track. That right. One day it's going <laughs> to it's, it's totally in my head. It's going to be so insane. Um, yeah. No. If you had told us that, you know, when we were in high school or even 10 years ago that we were going to be doing this, I would have been like, yeah, right. Right. But as you're saying, um, you know. As you're on the journey and all these paths open up, you have to sometimes you got to change your path and you right. have to go with the opportunities that come. Right, and that's what we did. So how did WWE come back now? So you're you're an engineer. Okay, right, so I'm 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 engineering and we're doing our thing after hours right. and uh, working on our own songs, and then um, our publisher 
who was a co-owner of wind up uh would like hear our stuff and you know he'd kind of pop his head in and be like is that you guys like you did you do that and we're like yeah yeah he's like oh so you don't just engineer i'm like no we we do we do it all um then so they heard that and then we signed to their publishing company and then they introduced us to neil lowey and the team at wwe and from there uh that was the beginning of uh, a great relationship that yeah. is now turned into so what is it fantastic. like you like you're like yeah we did this song you can use this song but we actually have the ability to record in all these different genres and stuff well it's funny because we kind of hit the ground running like i the first song we ever placed was the raw one on raw 1000 it was uh tonight is the night right so that was like not only just a theme but it was a theme for the whole show and you know we had never done it before so it, and it was a rap rock theme. It was, it was yeah, it was. I remember it. Full circle. Just saying, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> so yeah, no, that was that was really exciting. And I mean, you know, we did you sing it? Oh yeah, we yeah. both rapped. Yeah, on it's that. the it's the two of us on the whole time. Here. Love that. Yeah, yeah. And that would start a pattern of us, like you know, in a crunch. Like sometimes we we are the vocalists. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Um. And and we've we've used many different types of voices over the years now to, <laughs> you know disguise that <laughs> do you use it with effects or do you naturally just just shift your voice a little bit of both yeah i mean sometimes if you put you know a, like a distortion pedal or something or you can kind of screw with it a bit but a lot of times it's just okay try to sound what's your favorite different. one that one or both of you guys have sang on what, what's, i what's would have to say glorious which oh, yeah, is obviously you guys are singing on that oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yep. that's awesome the majority of it is actually him like all the super super high parts uh-huh. is is him because he, i'm a huge queen and yeah. a muse fan and, uh-huh. and we always like screw around in the studio like i'll just start <laughs> singing super high falsetto it's insane how high he can go dude like when you yeah. see it you just go what how that's not on a good day it's it's like it's it's kind of weird actually how high I can go, but um so yeah it started out with just doing that and layering it and then we ended up getting some friends of ours and and this is on this is on YouTube at this point and we just did like these giant uh, gang vocal sessions, so but at the core of it yeah that's I think you're doing harmonies too right oh yeah I'm, yeah, I'm definitely right. in there yeah, you know, I, I, I can I can I can sing not nearly as well as he can but. do you have a favorite one that you're on uh besides glorious man uh tonight is the night I think or. Uh, it's just because of what that song kind of means to me. Sure. And that was the breakout song where sure. it was us doing all the rapping and we wrote the whole thing. And um, e- even though it's pretty old at this point to me, that just that song in general just has like a special spot for me. So that's probably. I just realized that favorite. the name of the song is actually not the, the night. It's the night. I know. Oh, I just started saying tonight is the night. <laughs> Have you ever yeah, said, <laughs> remember that Ross song, the night? The night. I'd be like, no, <laughs> I don't <laughs> remember that Ross song. I don't know what you guys are talking about, um, and I don't think they ever you, used it. You also you sang on the NXT theme. Yeah, Roar of the Crowd is actually me doing my James Hetfield impression. Really? Yeah. yeah. Right. You would not think. That no, that I wouldn't think that at all. So sometimes we actually can change the way that we sound without using an effect that was him just going for it and and it worked so did you guys I, I feel like nxt must have been like a crazy creative outlet for you guys because i think that uh for a period of time wwe main roster stuff not now but for a period of time a lot of it sounded the same like it was a lot of rock themes that were not necessarily specific to characters you know they were a little bit more interchangeable than they right. are now um but NXT, I feel like, re rejuvenated characters and 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 that type of storytelling, and and every character needs this song. It had like an old school feel to it, down to, you know, the theme song, the roar of the crowd. Like when you'd go to Full Sail, they'd be hitting the <laughs> stomping, the, uh, yeah, yeah they'd be hitting the barricades and stomping along with the song. I love it. So is that? Do you feel like that was a big breakthrough for you guys when when NXT came about and? a lot more theme songs started revolving around characters. Yeah, I mean, I think NXT was a game changer for us um, just as far as uh, being creative. Yeah. I mean, Triple H is amazing when it comes to the talent and what he allows us to do and gives us kind of some space to do our own thing. Sure. He's, he's obviously, you know, he's the brains behind the whole thing and mm-hmm. everything goes through him, but um, a lot of the times he'll he'll kind of just point us in the right direction. And then he gives us a fair amount of space to do our thing. Um, With, I mean, that ability to recognize somebody's talent, that you, I don't have that talent, they have it. I know what my vision is, so I need to explain my vision to you and then just let you guys do your thing that you guys do. 
to an extent, yeah, it's not it's not completely just like okay, go do it, and then and sure. then that's great. I mean, he is very involved, and as is our team uh, throughout the entire process. But uh, that was kind of the start of us getting to put really ourselves a bit more into gotcha. into some of the songs. You know what I mean? It kind of felt like we kind of started with that brand when that brand really started to become what it was, uh-huh. and we were able to kind of grow with it because we're just you know we're learning as we go too. Um, writing entrances is is like it's an art in and of itself because you definitely know, we write songs but these aren't oh, really they're, they're very songs. different yeah yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're two different things yeah to us at least yeah a lot of people will tweet at us and they'll say why is this looping at this mark why is there no bridge and we're kind of like it's an entrance theme you know that's why and that's the, i mean that's the way it's always been i remember like uh you know in the in the 90s when they started putting out theme music cds yeah. And I just want to play them all the time. And my sister would be like, I'm not listening to this. That's a 30 second song on repeat. What are you doing? You're like, no, but I'm picturing him coming out to it. Yeah. It's, no. there's, there's this whole other thing that's tied yeah, to it. That's yeah. where he spits the water. Right. No, exactly. no, yeah, he's still coming. <laughs> that's the thing, though. It's not just a song for us. You know right. what I mean? It's tied to a bigger picture. And that's, it's, right. it's got to be tough. Like, do you, do you get to spend time with a certain superstar do you just get to talk about the character with somebody like triple h like how does because obviously you don't get to see them right no. before it happens because the entrance is part of the first appearance right. i mean and yeah and we you talk about nakamura and that that was that was that was a big thing when nakamura came out yep. at that first takeover the entrance was a huge part of it because his entrances in new japan had been such a big deal um and obviously you can watch new japan footage but it's like it, that to me has to be the most difficult part that you can't base it on the character because the theme is creating the character a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. We we had no idea how he was going to come out. Like we didn't see anything for that at all. Mm-hmm. We just came up with the song, and then what you know when you see him finally come out and he's timing all the hits, it just goes, "Yep, that worked." But we yeah. we don't see okay at ten seconds he's going to do this, and that, you know that's we kind of have to just use. Uh, what's in our heads and what we think could potentially happen for that. Are and you, then, and were you wrestling fans before this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm when, when I was a kid, I mean, that was, that was everything. Um, I definitely fell off for a bit uh-huh. at a certain point. I'm just going to be honest, but I, uh, d- I, I mean, that was like my childhood, like so much of my childhood well, is now we're so WWE. immersed in this world that, yeah. you know, we see it from this totally different angle and, you know, it's amazing because we're helping put on this, this show and it's such a giant beast of a company. There's so much going on in WWE. It's like insane. And I guess that's the other thing that NXT, part of it was timing, right? That you guys were not new with WWE anymore, meaning you had, you had kind of gotten a feel for the company and writing entrance themes and mm-hmm. doing stuff like that. So when NXT is ready to take off on this wave, you guys are right in that thing where you haven't really made your mark on the fan base yet in right. terms of them recognizing you mm-hmm. but the skill set had developed enough that you could yes and the timing was insane like you're saying it was kind of when we started doing a lot of the nxt stuff is when nxt really started blowing up and we didn't plan that either that just it all kind of happened organically right now when you're when you've got a song do you know like nakamura's like glorious like it like do you know like that's a song that's gonna like that hit because it's so interesting because again you talk about it being a totally different thing mm-hmm. if you're a pop singer you're thinking like that song is gonna be a hit because people are gonna play it on the radio and it's gonna be this big song right. like you guys have to have a song that people are gonna start like singing in an arena right not necessarily <laughs> like it's never gonna be on the radio right but it, no, it's, I know it's mean, yeah. something that you know are people gonna be able to like an anthem sing along to this even if there's no vocals i know well that's dude the nakamura that's so insane when when people started singing along to it's a it's like a violin i mean yeah. we thought that that was that song was incredible but we didn't think oh people are going to sing along to this we just thought like that's a sick violin and that came out insane but i mean that when i mean there, there, there is truly mind, <laughs> there is no way to know i mean that's the truth and we we always like some things could go either way. Like Glorious could have been like the biggest joke ever, absolutely, right? and gone over horribly. But it it was it's probably our biggest hit at the moment, you know, next to Nakamura. Um, but yeah, I mean, even like if you look at our top songs on Spotify, it's like Finn Balor, it's Sasha Banks, AJ, AJ, yeah, 
And yeah, I mean, we're always trying to push it, but like, it's so much of, there's like this chemistry that's happening between the superstar, the audience, the participation, obviously us and, and timing is everything. So I wish we could just keep recreating those types of songs only, but unfortunately, you know, sometimes kind of magic has to happen. Yeah. Know? I think I think the biggest thing is that for us, if if we are hype after it, mm-hmm. like if we're in the studio and we're doing it and the song gets done and we're jumping up and down and we can't help you, like, dude, this is sick. Yeah. Then usually then we might think, okay, this might be a hit. You know what I mean? You're but, doing your own little entrance moves. Oh, you should you. see us in the studio. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. We, we should put up a GoPro and just start capturing Yeah, because I guess the idea is if you can't, do an entrance to it yourselves, right? How do you expect you can give it to or, somebody else, right? Or like it. if I'm not excited and I don't want to sing along, why? Why should anyone else want to? You know what right. I mean? So we we try to kind of judge it by that, but you never really know. You know what I mean? You're not ever able to fully tell. Oh, this is going to be a smash. Are there any songs that you were like, this should be a smash, and it was like, not that it not that it was a dud, uh-huh. but it was just one of those sort of songs that exist, but people didn't go nuts for it like you thought they might. Um... Interesting question. Uh, <laughs> Off the top, I mean, not really. I think there's so we do so many songs too. To be honest, right? It's just kind of uh, time for the next one. Time for the yeah, next one. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of that, and um, for us, we we try not to get too caught up on oh that one didn't go over as well as we thought it would because it's just like you said, on to the next, and let's get another one. Do you hold your breath though a little bit when you know it's a big debut? Like for instance, AJ. Yeah. AJ Styles, he's coming out at the Rumble. This mm-hmm. is going to be a huge surprise. Yep. Like and and it's gonna blow people's minds. I mean, I it blew my mind, and yeah. like I kind of usually can see these things coming one way or another. Right. And I didn't see that one coming. No, I was like, yeah. AJ's going to NXT, or he's doing this, or he's doing that. Like, yep. and the music's as important as as anything, as we said. Do you or 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 Finn Balor, or any of these guys? Like, do you hold your breath, Bobby Roode? You know, it's a risk. Do you hold your breath when it's like it's time for them to make their first impression? This is one that people have been waiting for. Absolutely. Yeah, because it can go, you really don't know what's going to happen. So yeah. we're sitting there just going, okay, is this, and then when it does, you know, it's like the best feeling ever because, right. you know, we we put so much into it and it just, yeah, it's. it's I mean, it's, it's also rough. a team effort. So like, you know, if the, if everyone that's involved with these entrances and, and the music and everyone behind the scenes, like if everyone agrees that we all think this is going to be good, you kind of have to just have faith. Like, you know. It can't be, it's, and yeah, so it's not one of those things where you feel like, oh, I didn't see that coming, because it's not just you. Right, right, right. It's, it's a team of people yeah. that are all behind this thing. And yeah, I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't make the air if right. everybody you, you involved. You usually didn't. have a pretty good idea, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Like, you can tell how things are going to go over, um, yeah. just because of, like you're saying, how many people are in it, and how much of a push it's getting, and what it's kind of done so far. Yeah. But yeah, every now and then, you know, something just changes, and somebody comes out, and it's like, oh... I did not expect that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Have you had because any, you never know how the crowd's going to react. Have you had any uh, uh, songs that or, or guys that you thought, like, he's set, he's got his theme, and real quick it was like, ah, we're going to need a different one? Um, and not off the top of my head, honestly. Yeah. No, I couldn't. I, I mean, mean in general, weird. like, our biggest, our biggest kind of problem or fear, I guess, when writing is just we just don't want to make things sound the same. Right. And there's only so many very unique things you're going to be able to do. Um, that are, you know, that you're kind of allowed to do. I mean, the violin thing is what it is because there's no other theme like it. Right. And Bobby, it's, you know, there's no other theme like it. So sometimes we, you know, for whatever reason, uh, can't do something totally unique. And it's like, oh, let's write a rock song or let's do a hip hop song. And sometimes it's going to be an AJ Styles and then sometimes it's just not. It's hard when there's so much content too, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not like, we've done hundreds of songs at this point. You know, it's like. Yeah. And it's also interesting because like a guy like AJ Styles, like you wouldn't necessarily go like, well, obviously he needs a hip hop entrance. Right. And that's what a lot of people say actually. And I think that's why it. It works works the way it does. And then like I, I talked to him, like, I think I interviewed him, like it was the WrestleMania. So it was two or three months after he debuted. Mm -hmm. And he's like this big, he's a big Christian Hip hop fan, yep. and now all of a sudden you look at it through this lens of like it really is a reflection of this guy's personality, and it and everything kind of clicks and comes together. Yeah, he was all about that song. Like when he, he loved when, it. when he first heard that, it was it wasn't like a oh change this. It was one of those things where we had this song and it was like done. That's it. Perfect. So yeah, yeah. I'm assuming. So let's say hypothetically, there are songs 
that are intended for one person that go to a different person. I'm assuming that, that, that that's not necessarily something that there'll be a comment on in specific. Mm hmm. But I'm sure it happens from Thing, time yeah, to time. Yeah, I mean, things things happen. There, right. There's there's a lot of talent. We always are doing songs, like I was saying. So sometimes, even if we don't have someone in particular, you know what I mean, that we're we're coming up with a song for, we'll just be doing songs on our own of, hey, we think this could be cool. You know what I mean? And I, then all of a sudden it fits. Right. And then sometimes, you know, it'll come up and it'll be, oh, hey, we need a song for so-and-so. And we'll, oh, well, we, we actually have something right. right here. You know what I mean? Um, so, it's not always a... A, uh, a straight ahead. Um, here's what we need for that person. Like, like Kanye West playing beats for Jay Z. Well, what about <laughs> right, this one? Yeah, what about one? that? Right. That's it. Right. That's the single. There's a bit of that. Yeah. I mean, the majority of the time, it is it is custom tailored, where they come to us and the entire team is going, "Here's what we want," and then we do our thing. But sometimes we do pull songs out of our pockets that we've already had, and then you know it's, they'll try it out for someone, and they go, "Oh no, you know, actually, it should it should be for this person instead." And then do you look at it and go like, "Oh my God, I can't believe that." that was going to go there and this was going to go here because we look at it now and everything is so closely associated. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why, like, we just try to write a good song to start. And right. And it's like, okay, would I want to walk out to this? Right. Like, regardless of what my, my character is or any of that. Like, uh -huh. is this... Does it have enough energy? Or if it's if it doesn't, like, say, say it's a, a super soft, you know, piano ballad, it, is that kind of gimmick going to go over at all? Right. You know, for anybody. Like, it's more of a set piece. It's not really like a... Oh, this is a kick-ass song I want to hear while I'm working out. So, like, right. we have to decide. Like, yeah. So we're we're there just just trying to make that work, and then wherever things may fall, and whoever is going to kind of grab it and make it their own, it's 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 great to watch that just from from you know from our perspective. Mm -hmm. Was glorious, which as you said is your biggest uh, uh, one of your biggest probably two hits right now. Did that always sound like that? Like was it always this big? It was probably half as big as it ended up being, right? Like to to be honest, we we had that song and then um, we uh, shot it over to the team and we were uh, talking with them about it and you know it was it was everybody was like this is really good but it needs to be huge, big, big, bigger, it needs to bigger. be right because in the beginning it was only the two of us that sang and and we and we stacked tons of vocals, sure, sure, tons and tons of vocals. Yeah, but that's what people like for those that aren't familiar. Like when you're using something like Pro Tools. You sing, and then you sing again, right. and then you sing again, mm -hmm. and then you sing again, and it you can build tracks on a on a computer screen, so it's like you have a chorus of right, people. Right, exactly. Yeah. And and like you were saying before, we're able to slightly change the way that we sound. You know sure, what I mean? Sure. So we'll do like ten takes as is, and then we'll do another ten takes with like a slightly different kind of pitch. To, you know, you know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. once you stack that, you start to sound like you got like 30, 40 people. Yeah. And then I think afterwards. Uh, we went from like 40 voices to, I think the end count was like 100 <laughs> vocal tracks. No right. joke. It was, and then, but, yeah, so we, we did some other ones of ourselves and then we brought in our friends. Yeah. Because when we're doing them with the two of us, we'll each go at our own time, you know, so you have a clean take and then uh, we did some more of that. And then at the very end, we brought in our friends and uh, we just had everybody singing at the same time. So it gives kind of like, it's not as perfect, you know what I mean? So it gives a bit of that. Uh, actual feel of oh this is a group of people singing it's not just stacking in Pro Tools and totally. edited in computer you know what I mean you can act you can you can feel the different voices right exactly do you like uh, I mean and it's all about the choices right because that Bobby Roode song it's like it could just start with you know glorious mm -hmm. but that like that that like piano drum roll thing it has become gotta the give thing. it to Neil for that I have to give it really? to Neil that was Neil 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 made the call to put that piano in the beginning that bung yeah and and it does and look, by the, look what it did yeah, it makes amazing. it so much bigger because now there's this anticipation yeah we right? actually had the song just kick off with the chorus you right know, that and seems then, like the natural kickoff point right, in my mind was, like, yeah. Yeah. and that's why having this team is so important because yeah. A you know we, we were talking to him and, and he goes Dude, you got, we, we need a hundred of these. Like, we need more <laughs> vocals. And we're like, dude, dope, cool. Like, let's do yeah. it. And then at the very, very end, it was his idea to 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 put the piano roll in the beginning. That's awesome. And look what it did. He and also it, now did it's the amazing. same thing for Nakamura. That that first yes, thing did. you hear is an electric uh, violin. That, like that. Boom, 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 yeah. Boom, boom, we just boom. had the song kick on where you know <laughs> we had that at first, and then that's right. Neil was like, nope, Neil, yep. Put this in the he beginning. He was there. <laughs> he was actually in the studio with us while we were uh, recording violin for that. And again, one of the last things we did, and this is why he is so good at his job, because one of the last things that we did, he was like, hey, what if you take that part, that dun, 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 because that was in a different part of the song. And he goes, what if like you play it down low and like slower, and it's this cool thing. 
And, you know, sometimes you hear things like that and you go like, wait, what? Like, wait, it's like, so low. Like, it's a violin. It should be up high. And yeah. you go like this. And then once you do it, you go, oh, yep. Now it's this badass right. thing. And and yeah, it's it, it turned out incredible. And uh, all props to Neil for that. Yeah, sometimes we get lost, you know, because we're in the studio all, all day, every day. Sure. So sometimes we get a little bit like we need a, that outside perspective. And, um, you know, just last night when I was, when we were, we were at SmackDown and... I was just walking to our seat and I just heard AJ come on and it kind of reminded, it was almost like we had nothing to do with the song. Like we were just. Cause it's a whole different context. For yeah. It. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought to myself, I'm like, damn, that worked well. Like every time <laughs> it's like, I'm hearing it for the yeah. first time. It's like, I mean, that's so cool to be, I would hope that you guys get to shows as often as possible. Cause it's gotta be cool. It's cool on TV, but in an arena. Oh, it's, it's different. Like yeah. it's mind blowing for us. Yeah. Cause like, you've really got to have these is, flashbacks yeah. of like, wait a minute. That was us in a studio just seeing what stuck. Yeah. Like, just trying stuff. Yeah. That's a perfect way to put it. We, yeah. we typically try to go uh, as often as we can. Like, yeah. usually whenever they come to New York, we'll go unless um, if there's something that we're doing for TV that day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, sometimes we'll, we'll we'll be doing stuff up until an hour before the show. Like, helping with entrances? Yeah, like, because just doing tweaks, to... tweaking something or or, or whatnot. And, right, because um, if, if there's a big entrance... Right require sound cues right you might need to alter these themes a little exactly bit. so we're typically on call up until you know tv um so on the there's only been a few times when they've been in new york and we've been stuck having to do something like right up until tv and then yeah. we usually don't go because at that point we're just like exhausted it's, yeah, right, yeah and then it's it's just too much of a uh, of a hassle to but get we there, like but. being involved i mean even like uh you know at takeover just a couple of days ago we were in the in the truck um, making sure that uh, Code Orange sounded right for Alistair's entrance. Really? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's cool. <laughs> we like being hands on like that, and and because we want, you know, we want that song presented the best it can be. Yeah. And we're kind of perfectionists, so. Right. But I mean, it's just so great that they that the WWE would not just think of you guys as those are our studio guys, whatever. They send us our stuff, and then we get our hands on it. Like you go in and actually get to, you know, because it, it, it get to. Just be Work with Code Orange yeah, and be a right. part of it and be in the truck and like, you know, they, 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 your brains are are trusted like that. Yeah, no, they they are incredible to us, honestly. It's, yeah. They, they treat us amazing. Are there any visuals uh, that you really have liked and didn't see coming? And I only say that because like I was thinking about TakeOver and Aleister Black walking through the band was like, it was one of those things that I was like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I would have thought to do that no, I, and just the look of it because it's not like it's not like you know when dx was up there with the dx band and everybody was just partying and stuff it's like mm -hmm. it, it, it was it was like it was almost like the band became a prop for his entrance yeah we were at the rehearsal for that and uh you know they start <clears throat> putting the thing behind the drum set and, and it's like he's gonna come up behind the drums and we were like wait what that's that really and like walk through the band and then but once you see it and you do the rehearsal yeah. you go Oh, okay. I get why H wanted to do that, and, and it's brilliant. And do you like so? Obviously, you're still learning because you mm -hmm. like you see something like that, and you're like, huh? Yeah, like I yeah. never would have, <laughs> never would have thought that. So does that alter the way that that you do what you do? Like when you're when you're trying to create a theme, do you now see like m bigger possibilities for entrances and and how this needs to fit where? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think um, the more time that we spend doing this, the more. It's going from, okay, we're in the studio and let's come up with just a, a song that we think is great to actually picturing these things now and being like, we have to compose a theme and a killer, killer theme. And I f feel like we're more honed in on that now than we were in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, there's choreography involved, you know, obviously. And that's why we'll pay attention to things like, you know, is this like a really big dude coming out or is this like a, where he's going to move slower and we got to pace things differently or is it someone who's going to kind of just, you know, has a lot of energy like like Enzo coming out, just right. <laughs> whole different kind of vibe. And, you know, we, we'll look at the clock when we're when we're playing the song back and be like, OK, it's 40 seconds here. He's going to be at the ring or whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever we're thinking. Yeah. We try to keep a, really a general yeah. timeline. I mean, not anything so specific where it's like, OK, at the 20 second mark, it has to do this. But we, as we said, we haven't seen his entrance. Right. Yet. You don't know how are they going to come out at the top and stay for a minute? Sure. Right? You know what I mean? So you don't know. But we try to kind of picture how we would how or how we think they would do it. And it's usually not ever what <laughs> what they would actually do. You know what I mean? Because we're yeah. not them. But yeah. um. Yeah, we try to keep that in mind and then and then they take it and they do their thing and that's kind of the beauty of it as well because we're composing the song and we think we know what they're going to do. Sure. And then they do their own thing and then it becomes this 
this whole other thing that you know is is so far beyond just this song that we wrote did you do tyler breeze's music yes so when you have uh tyler enzo themes like that mm -hmm. where the superstars are doing their own lyrics are right. you working with them yes you are well uh for tyler tyler did you guys scream tyler is that your voice in the, the beginning? beginning? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We 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 may have gotten a uh, a crew of paparazzi to come to the studio of some paparazzi friends and uh, and just have a bunch of yeah we we we, we had fun with that. One. I think I think we did like twenty takes of like that intro and then, and then we just picked kind of the best one. Though. <laughs> but so you work with with the superstars when they're doing their own lyrics? Yeah, for that one, Tyler. Um, Tyler recorded that uh, off-site, so mm -hmm. he didn't come to the studio. But uh, Enzo, we we were in the studio with, and um, we've we've been in the studio with Enzo a couple times. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's really good. Yeah, well, he's got yeah. I mean, he's he's working on music outside of WWE yep. too, right? Are exactly. you guys helping him out with that? Uh, we we we've done a couple things here we're, and there. Uh, yeah, here and there. I okay. mean, we've uh, we've talked about a bunch, and and we we had a couple days in the studio. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any uh, any music that you think, not that it doesn't get love, but should get more love? Like for instance, I guess like I I'm like. Do you? Yeah, I think the yeah, Sasha Banks music is like one of the best songs. Thank you, man. In a long time, I feel like that gets a lot of love, though. It no, get, or... I mean, I don't. I think it get like you said, it's on Spotify and people listen to it, yeah. but it's not. I, I, it's they, not like talked about. It's as not like talked one of about the best as themes. Right, you don't sing along point. with it, That's a good point. like and and I think like the lyric, like it has this 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 weird ability to travel with her. Like it worked when she was a heel, right? And she was like, you know, Sasha's ratchet. No, she like like <laughs> yeah. that like that whole thing. Because yep. then it was like it sounded you know kind of cocky and egoy mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. And then when she gets to the main roster and becomes more like the real person who's just happy to be there and I can't believe I'm doing this and I was a little girl who wanted this then yeah. the lyrics start to become literal yeah and you know what I mean and it, yeah. and then it travels with her there I think for that it's probably the juxtaposition um between the two parts like the chorus is very hopeful almost, right you know what I mean and then like when you get into the other part you know it goes in uh, it's it's a bit more on that cocky and yes had and a dream that i made it here it's right not, like it's very it's very like pff, yeah dude i know i know i'm good plus know? that's got another one that like do, 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 <laughs> like that and that like that yeah, it's but, awesome yeah, yeah. It, it, it's awesome the song actually started with that part that was the first thing we did i was i was on keys and and we were going through much stuff and we got that and we were like, "Oh, dude, that's that's cool." Yeah, and then we built we actually built the whole song off of that. That's cool. And then she and, and she does the thing with the hands oh, and man. the hips. And well, that's and the, another you know case in point of how they they do their thing to our yeah. songs, and that we didn't picture any of that, but the way that she took it, and it's right. it's incredible now. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like filmmaking. It's like it's yeah. like all the like you're this part, they're this part, this part, this part, and like this collaboration comes together. Yeah, where it's like, wow. So do you do you have any any songs like that? Um, I mean, I, I think, think you love Dana Brooks' song, right? I do. I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's, no. I, think that's, I think that's one for Mike. I mean, that's I, I love it too. But yeah, I that's mean, just heavy. That's like really heavy for a female, you know? It is. Or it's, yeah. it's easy for us to get excited about. Just we want things. We we love hard rock and stuff. And like, obviously, it always works for someone to walk out to that because the impact is there right away. Mm -hmm. Um, Sasha, it's funny you brought it up because it's it's. The synth, although it's cool it, and it's very unique to her, it's like it's it doesn't pack a ton of energy right yeah. away. Right. It's like reserved. You kind of have to kind of have to get into it, and it's like a vibe you have to kind of catch on to. So. But but it, but because it's so unique, it's like it took time. So it doesn't. I'm sure it didn't have this massive like reaction when it first came out. But now you know that that means Sasha. Right. And then and that's why like right. and then this wave comes because all it takes is that doo -doo 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 -doo, yeah. and, and everybody's like, She's coming. Well, it's also, you know, the song is now tied to her. So that's right. that's where we're going back to saying where a song on its own, like, yeah, that, that could be a great song on its own, but now when you tie it with her, it's like it takes it to this whole other tier. And so. even the Breeze song, like like how like like right on the beat they do that extreme <laughs> close up <laughs> yeah. on him. It was like boom. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as we got him on that too, that just took it to another like that because we just had the 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 track without him on it. Like to begin with, and that was gonna be what he came out to, and then we were like, Yo, we 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 gotta get him on this. So we we wrote a bunch of stuff, and then you know we we shot it over to him, and 
he went back and forth and kind of had a bunch of notes and we, and we tweaked it together and then he recorded it and we got it back and we were like, yep, done. <laughs> and it's so funny because that's a risky thing because I'm sure everybody wants to be like, uh, everybody wants to be sexy boy Shawn Michaels. Everybody wants to do their own <laughs> lyrics, you know. Everybody wants to, yeah. to, to have that thing. Yeah. But, uh, but we actually don't do that a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah. It I think only it's works. Really, just him, Enzo, and the Usos now. I right. Think are the only. Are, like, are the Usos rapping on their new oh, song? Yeah. That's them yeah, rapping. Yeah. They just they came in like two weeks ago, I think. It's and, really uh, good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. We shot you. a we shot a segment on it. Um, I think it's this week. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It just aired right. this past week. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. They, yeah because uh, I mean, in. and that's exciting because the Usos like, they have this like, I think the Usos are like, one of the sort of freshest, most relevant characters on tv right now just the the twist that they're that, that, that they've gone and it feels like it's them in there and absolutely and it's 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 stuff that people say but you don't hear on wwe much you know it's just very now and relevant and and young and fresh and right. and and yeah and i guess it's good that they have a a theme to go and with that, that, right? that is them too man like right we we spend time with them and and that is them that's not them uh trying to be someone else like yeah are there any uh, any nuggets that I mean you can't give away much I'm sure but is there any anything people should be looking forward to? Oh, always I we I don't think we could touch that. I mean probably we're, not <laughs> probably not right. There's, would, I, there's always something coming. Uh, right. We always joke about how like w- w- we want to like put stuff on Instagram and, and like here's what we're working on. Yeah, like a clip, just yeah, like like an audio it. clip or like right. a video clip, you know. But can't uh, do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. But did, there's definitely there's there's some good ones. I'm sure. I mean, coming, like you said, I'm sure you're soon. doing songs every single day. So, yeah, yeah. do you uh, did you do bronze? Yep. Yes, we did. That's what I was gonna point out because like bronze is such a good example of like it could just be kind of a standard rock track, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not. Yeah, there's nothing to. I mean, it's not too uh, cr- crazy of a of a of a song. Yeah. But there's just something about it that like that like. But plus, it's now when, when you associate him to the song, you right. know what I mean? That's yeah, that's what takes it that other you know twenty percent or however much it is. It's also like it's it's a unique groove, I guess. Yeah, you know? like it, it just kind of it moves the way that I at least picture him moving in real life. Honestly, like for some reason, when I hear the song in my head and on TV, I just picture a guy crushing rocks <laughs> right as he walks like walking on stones and crushing them and that's him yeah. right that, yeah. isn't that I the mean, character that's braun Strowman to a t. Dude, to a t, man. <laughs> yeah man. yeah wow my god is there a uh i don't do you guys pretty much exclusively do wwe stuff like there's not a a, a ton of uh outside of wwe cfo um I mean, we, we, we do some stuff. Pri- primarily, WWE takes up the majority of, of our time right. just because of how much content there is. And, yeah. And um, that's great. But uh, we definitely, we, we do outside work as well. Um, yeah. It's just more about having time to do it. You right. know what I mean? So, right. Yeah, we'll always be the guys who are like, you know, we're making beats on the side. We're doing fun stuff, fun projects. But I mean, nothing nothing like, yeah, that's going to eat up too much of the day because yeah. there's always... A million things to be done. So plus, you guys are really lucky that we live in the digital age, because otherwise, know. otherwise you'd be permanent residents of Stanford, Connecticut, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you wouldn't be able to. I know. Yeah. To have a New York City studio. Well, no that's way. the great thing. You'd too. be on the road. No, be, yeah. yeah. And that's why it's great to do like the outside stuff too, because it's people can send us files from anywhere, and and we can be doing right. things. So right. But yeah. No. Well, excellent, guys. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you guys stopped by. I mean, people, I think I think it's so cool that when did you get the get the get a gauge that people were kind of really interested in you guys as artists because i feel like that that that's the thing now people talk about cfo's themes i feel like it's definitely just starting to pick up now yeah um we probably started seeing stuff on the internet maybe around like 2015 you mm-hmm. know where where people were actually hitting hitting us up and and starting to really care and be like oh wow you you guys did all this um but i'd say within the last year probably there's it's it's getting it's getting to a pretty cool point where people are like recognizing us when we go to a show or really? something. Really, like we never thought that was going to be a thing. Yeah. So, um, but I, I kind of think it it has a lot to do with so many people from NXT now being you know staples on the show on the main roster, and you know I guess people just at some point wondered like, well, who made that Nakamura song? Who made that Bobby Roode song? And yeah. Now it's like I also think that uh, in my opinion, I think it's. Spotify, a lot of it, because like uh, we weren't always on Spotify. Yeah, so I think Spotify. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's because because really that's where like it used to be. You'd hear the themes on TV, and every year or two they'd have a CD out or something like that. Right. But now 
as soon as the theme is on TV, it's on Spotify and iTunes. YouTube I kind of mean the, now, yeah, the digital landscape. Yes. But when you go on Spotify and you go on iTunes and you go all these places, it says your name on it. It yeah. says CFOs on it. Mm-hmm. And you can click CFOs and see all these themes. In your, and that, to me, I think is when a lot of fans started being like, oh, these guys are the ones doing it. Right. Like it's not just some... This is just WWE music in here. And that's is. all because of them. That's all because of the WWE. They, right. They, 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 they have been pushing us for the last year. Yeah. And, uh, well, actually, even like before that, like you're saying, but they, they have really been kind of uh, giving us a bit of a push this past year. I mean, between the behind the scenes stuff where they came to the studio and they shot a bunch of stuff of how, yeah. we, how we did certain songs to this acoustic uh, performance we did a couple weeks ago, you know, on the Nakamura theme. Yeah. Um, so... There will probably be more things like that to that's, come in the future. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I really like the Nakamura video. Thank you. Yeah, I think it came out really, really well. It was very cool. That was a that was a fun day, man. We went everywhere. It that did. was that was like a ten hour day. It was like hundred and ten degrees outside. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we, we we played that. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, man. Just, just over going, and over. Just going and over to all again. the all the different places. Yeah, but it was cool because every time we would you know we would go to a spot and play the song. And then go somewhere else, and we would get like a different crowd of people coming up to us, and and it was it was a really great experience. The guy that plays it live, his name is escaping me at the moment. Lee England Jr. Yes, Lee England Jr. He's not the guy on the track, is he? Not on the original, right? Uh, he di- we now have a version with him on it. As oh, well. very cool. Yeah, but he's he's the dude who comes out and plays all the shows, right. and he is like the rock star of of that theme. He was so, he was at SummerSlam. He's yeah. Props to Lee, and he is he is the homie. He is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Crushing it. Well, congratulations, guys, on uh, Thank you, man. on everything. I Thank think you it's so, so cool uh, seeing this, and you know, I love that the WWE does this now. They didn't always, but WWE is getting very good and I don't think gets enough credit at finding people outside and allowing the, you know and and using their brand to kind of coexist all together. Mm-hmm. You know that wasn't always happening. Oh, definitely not. I mean, it's 2017, you know. Right. A lot of a lot of things are changing. There's so a lot of collaboration going of on and it's uh, it's very very cool. Um and thanks for stopping by, guys. Man, thanks thanks thank for you so much us, for having man. us, man. Of course.